Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for April 8th, 9th, and 10th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now this is a general reading, and this is the introduction. For the main readings, I will be using my Radley Valentine decks. I will be using my Angel Tarot cards. Um, for the, like I said, the main readings, I will pull one from my Archangel Power Tarot cards. I will also pull one from my Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Now, again, for the introduction, and I will post the timestamp. This is the introduction that will be on all the videos, but if you click on the uh, timestamp, it's supposed to take you to um, the start of whatever video you're looking for. But for the introduction, I'm going to use my Weight Rider traditional tarot cards, and I will pull one from my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Just remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. Now, this is an overview of what's going on in the world. So, um, you remember, all the planets are going direct. Um, they're very pushy. They're very forward. We just had Venus go into uh, Pisces, which should kind of lift things up a little bit or soothe things down a little bit more. Mars, which is in Aquarius, is going to have some sort of communication or some sort of connection with Mercury, which is in Aries right now. That's going to be on the 8th. So Mercury is, you know, communication, fleet of foot. Um, you know, things get buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. We could be hearing some really strong um, rumors. We could be hearing some strong, um, just agitated type of communication. Because remember, Mars and Aries god of war um but but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be this war but we could be hearing communications that just kind of um push us a little bit more to our maybe maybe a little bit more uncomfortable maybe feel a little more uncomfortable so that could be the eighth ninth now uh, or seventh eighth ninth now we do have something on the 12th 13th with Neptune and Jupiter within Pisces. And that, from what everything that I'm reading, everything that I'm thinking of, and, you know, just kind of connecting with, it does not seem to be negative. It seems to be a very positive um, experience. But I do have to meditate and pray a little bit more and get a little more insight on that. So I will, you know, when... Well, next week, or for the next week's reading, we will talk a little bit more about that. So, let's go on. Now, like I said, I've prayed, meditated. I have infused them all with Reiki energy. Um, I am an intuitive channeler. That means that I open myself to higher power. My job, just to deliver the message. Try not to read too much into it, unless whatever it is that's given to me. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Anything that's reversed is stronger. That's how I read reversed cards. First card is the moon. Okay, we know the moon. The moon is, you know, I don't worship the moon. I look at it, it as a divine creation. And it is something that when I look at this, I can just, you know, the energies that I put out to the universe, to the source, to, you know, to the higher power, just feel like they're more magnified. The moon does affect our our world here, okay, our earth. So I'm kind of getting this, you know, affecting our earth. The moon has a lot of intuition, insight, is associated with intuition, insight, but the moon is also have a, has a lot of hidden, hidden energies, hidden agendas, okay? Think of the moon, it might go through its phases, and right now we are in the waxing phase, which means that, you know, it's getting fuller and fuller and fuller, and it's a good time to put out your requests, put out your requests, and, you know, just really put out your requests. Um, but it's always, we always see just one side of the moon. We don't know what's going on that other side. Nobody has told us that yet. So there is hidden information, hidden energies, hidden things, hidden plans going on. Now, I have been really kind of, you know, talking about this a little more about how with the moon, the moon has a little bit, of, has a stern face looking down, at least in this card. Um, and then there's these animals that maybe not, you know, maybe they're, they're creatures of the night. Um, they're, you know, the, the lobster is the one, you know, what are they? They're bottom feeders, though, you know, lobsters can taste very good. 
But so there's something coming up. It's something's being pulled out, pulled up and pulled out. Now we go with that eight. Hey, maybe there's some hidden energies, hidden messages coming out soon. Go with the numbers, 18. One has a new beginning, 10, transition, eight, unlimited opportunities. So let's see what else we have here. Then we have the sun. Then we have the sun. The, you know, the, differ the difference between night and day. Night and day. So now we have a 19. Again, that one zero plus nine. Nine has, let's wrap it up. Let's get things done. You know, this is, you have everything that you need. The sun is associated with um, fire energy. A lot of times it's associated with Leo, but it's also, you know, they're Sagittarius and Aries. So fire energy. So there is things hidden. There is things revealed. So hidden, revealed riding into some type of victory or or at least maybe the person maybe the little one isn't riding per se but doesn't look unhappy so this but at the, again too the face of the sun while this one looked very stern this one it doesn't necessarily look um welcoming but it doesn't look scary either and kind of looks like be at peace be at peace so let's see let's see what we have here next card is the chariot. So we have three major arcana cards. So this is very strong energy around the world, around the universe, universal energy coming. Uh, things are hidden. They could be revealed. The chariot has a lot of different energies. For me, one thing is it's like fast. It's fast. Things happen quickly. So we might, you know, we might, uh, might have some very strange stuff happening, being communicated. You know, I go back to that Mars and uh, Mercury thing going on. So we might be hearing some of the news. Now, the chariot also brings about victory. The chariot also brings about, um, you know, like promotions. So there's, you know, there's wonderful energies. But the chariot is also about hands off the wheel. You know, let higher power, let the universe take over. That this could be something that's going on in the universal um, energy. Well, this is, you know, more going on in the universal energies. We, may, we, you know, we might not necessarily feel in control of what's happening but interesting stuff. Like I said, things are hidden. Things are, you know, being revealed. Victory. That would be a very wonderful energy. Now, seven. Seven is our is the is a divine number. It is divine intervention. It is divine umbrella. Sometimes it's divine interference. So maybe that's what this is all about. Maybe we're going to need some divine interference this weekend, so that things that have been hidden can be revealed. You know, I'm kind of uh, brought to, you know, higher power, God, whoever you want to call it, you know, made the world, divided it by the nightlight and the daylight. So, I don't know, that kind of, uh, that kind of pops into my head right now. But there's victory, higher power, take the wheel, energy. So, let's go on here and see what John Holland's cards... Can you clarify what this is about? Because we had the, you know, something dark to light, dark to light, victory, things happening very quickly. What is it that we need to know from John Hall? Or what is it that the universe can tell us to clarify this, to clarify this? For the most part, it does, you know, this is very, very positive energy here. Um, this, this is not necessarily negative. It's just, you know, kind of in its neutral state. Um, okay, let's see what we've got here. Moving on. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? If this is again, and again, this is, this is kind of confirmation. And I hope that this, you know, this, I hope this is something that, um, we can really, really feel. I hope that this is one of those transitional weekends, but this is moving on. We have a six number of man. It's the energies that we put into something. It's going from dark to light. And I would like that. <laughs> so <laughs> moving on, you know, moving into the light. So this weekend could be very interesting. We will see what we will see. Interesting. I do love how cards confirm each other, but, or give us validation. Anyway, take a moment to, and I hope, you know, let me know what you think about this. Um, you know, you, I have so many people that follow that, you know, when you, you comment and you bring me so much insight. So when you're watching this, 
What is higher power telling you about this? Let me know. Anyway, take a moment, please, to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. Now, why don't we start our readings? And hello to my lovely Cancers. How are you? Well, you know that uh, your journey is always emotional, up and down, but it's so heartfelt. And we have the Empress coming out. The Empress, number three, three has a lot of power, power of three, people coming together. Um, it also creativity and it also celebration, but the Empress is creativity. The Empress is the divine feminine energy. A lot of times this is karma, a lot of time, you know, karma balancing itself. We're not quite, it, it happens more, the Empress energy is quite strong, I think, during Mercury retrograde. But we are, I think we're going into a transition of, with Mercury. I think it goes to Taurus, I think, on the 11th. Could be wrong on the date. But the Empress is Archangel energy. It is Archangel Gabriel. You might be hearing news because he is the divine messenger. He brings, you know, he brings good news. He brings you, you know, something that's really earth shattering type of news too. The Empress, again, is that feminine universal energy, wants to just provide for you, wants to give you what you need. Now, it may not be what you necessarily want or what you think you need, but it is what the universe believes you need. So something you might be getting some messages. You might be hearing some news. Um, you might be getting some gifts. Again, the Empress brings abundance. The Empress brings joy. The Empress brings about new opportunities and new possibilities also. It is reversed. So here we are. Three, the Empress, Archangel Gabriel. La lavish abundance. Give birth to your dreams. Nurture yourself and others. So enjoy the Empress energy. And this might be, you know, something maybe with Venus and Pisces. It's just a lovely warm um just like oh yes let me bathe bathe in the empress <laughs> the empress's energies here we go next card is the five of air ah so then we have five of air five of air this is um five is about change positive negative air is uh, could be either or of those a little bit on the stressful side air is our sword energy it is our aquarius gemini libra energy a lot of times with the Five of Air, this is the Five of Swords, and you will hear me call the Five of Swords if you listen in the introduction when I use my regular tarot cards uh, or my Weight Rider tarot cards, that I call that Sneaky Snake. So the Five of Air is kind of that watch out, be, be aware of Sneaky Snake. It doesn't mean that um, you are, you know, that, well, this will talk about an unwise choice, learn what you can from the situation, review everyone's motives. It could be about something that's maybe not maybe you're, you know not quite as wise as you should say, and we do have that Mercury thing going on. So people are going to be a little bit more verbose. So maybe you're going to say something you want to like say, oh, why did I say that? However, however, we are human beings. We live in this world. We do what the best we can, and sometimes the stress makes us give us gives us a little bit of a ah, I gotta say this, I gotta do this. Okay, however, this Empress energy is like giving, loving, wants you to start with your dreams. The Empress is universal energy. It is stronger than what is happening in the reality of our world. But Sneaky Snake is not one to necessarily to avoid, or it's, it's basically, you just have to kind of, they, they don't necessarily want to give what you need. Okay, so with this, Five of Swords, two swords are on the ground, the sneaky snake is carrying the three, looking very pleased with himself, looking very much like, ha, 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 you don't know what's going on. The thing is, the empress is there to help you and protect you and to, tell, you know, and to say, oh, yeah, I do know what's going on. So there's some sort of a, 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 a protection over sneaky snake with this five of air and this empress. Not quite sure where we're at. Let's go on this card here. Next card reversed. The four of air. So basically, four, stability, leadership, organization, again, that air energy. So while Sneaky Snake is doing what Sneaky Snake does, four of air is saying, chill, calm down. Basically, you know, let, let, let Sneaky Snake think everything is all good and Sneaky Snake's getting away with anything. 
Okay, and I, I don't know who this is for at all. It's like, whoa, but these things are coming. Let them, let them, let Sneaky Snake think because the Empress is saying, mm -mm, not on my watch. It's not happening. That's not what I want for my cancers right now. So the four of air is time to rest or take a vacation. Allow more time before making a decision. So you don't, whatever this is that they might be pushing, whoever, he, she, Sneaky Snake, SS might be pushing, Medi you know, take more t allow more time before making a decision. Meditation may provide answers. Connect with your higher power. You're, you know, because it's not this. This empress is really kind of clearing this stuff up, and I feel like this empress is like, like really being very aware of what's going on by sneaky snake. So for a bear, you don't really have to do a whole lot of anything. Sneaky snake gets caught. Sneaky snake gets caught. Anyway, let's see what we've got here. With the Archangel cards. Okay, this one is not reversed. The Ace of Michael. So Michael, air energy. So you have a basically 3, 5, 4, 1, 1, 4, 3, 1, 4, 5, 3. Ace is one, new beginning, new start. Again, you have all this Michael energy, all this thought processes energy. This is, this is seeing things differently. This is like light bulb. This has wonderful energy so that after whatever this is, whatever this is going on, you let higher power, you know, to, you know, you give it to higher power. Higher power works through you, of course, and works through others, of course, but this is new start, new ideas, new pathways. A wonderful new idea. Don't allow bumps in the road to hinder your progress. Clear up communication problems with others. And remember, you know, that Mercury thing. Mercury is about communication, and it does go into a, into Taurus. I think it's the 11th. I could be wrong, but I think it's the 11th. Anyway, so yeah, the Empress is taking wonderful care of you, my Cancers. Don't, don't, you know, chill out. Uh, not don't chill out, chill out, chill out, okay? New stuff is happening, and I think it kind of feels like Sneaky Snake is no longer relevant. Okay, let's see what we've got. Crystals or energy, two cards popped. They're both reversed. Lapis Lazuli, I like just saying that. Prophetic dreams, releasing anger, serenity, grace. Malachite, I love Malachite too. Pain relief, transformation, vision, powerful protection. Love them both. Okay, so you there is there's pop there the empress. The empress is providing. The empress is protecting. Enjoy it. Welcome it. Accept it. Okay, my cancers, take a moment now to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. As always, my cancers. Know that you are loved, stay shining, and be blessed. Bye-bye.